Welcome to our presentation on D-dimer testing, brought to you by Kate Smith, Chelsea Walter, and Meg Hunt. D-dimers are fibrinolytic degradation products composed of cross-linked fibrin, which are released in response to prior disseminated intravascular coagulation, or DIC, or local activation of coagulation. Basically, D-dimers appear in situations involving blood clots, i.e. thrombosis. The test is performed from a simple venous blood draw and the results are available in about 15 to 30 minutes usually. D-dimer testing is commonly used in conjunction with other imaging studies to rule out deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism. In a clinical situation, when your suspicion of a PE or DVT is low, a D-dimer test may be ordered. With low clinical suspicion, a normal or negative D-dimer test may be enough to rule out a PE or DVT from your differential. However, many providers will still order imaging studies like lower extremity ultrasounds, VQ scans, and CT pulmonary angiography studies for confirmation. A negative D-dimer test in combination with the absence of DVT and PE findings on imaging studies will generally rule out these conditions. However, it is important to note that D-dimer testing is not diagnostic. Although a negative test helps to rule out these conditions, sometimes additional imaging is warranted. Alternatively, a false positive could be related to a number of other causes and may result in unnecessary imaging studies being done. Another use for D-dimer testing is in the diagnosis and monitoring of DIC and fibrinolytic therapy. A D-dimer test may have a false positive result for a variety of reasons other than a DVT or PE. Some of these include metastatic cancer, trauma, sepsis, elevated rheumatoid factor, heart disease, liver disease, pregnancy, and postoperative states. A slow blood draw, multiple punctures, or other errors in drawing the initial blood sample can also result in inaccurate findings. Here is an example of an algorithm which can be used and helpful to determine whether or not a D-dimer test is warranted. In this algorithm, they use the Wells criteria to determine the risk and suspicion of a DVT or PE. On this slide, we have the Wells criteria for pulmonary embolism. Clinicians can use this to determine their level of suspicion for a pulmonary embolism. Some of these items include a heart rate that is tachycardic or greater than 100 beats per minute, a patient that has been immobilized at least three days or that they've had surgery in the last four weeks, they have a history of a pulmonary embolism or a deep vein thrombosis. Perhaps they have homoptysis. Or they have a recent history of cancer treatment within the last six months. Here is the Wells criteria for deep vein thrombosis. Items include if the patient has active cancer, if they've been recently bedridden, for over three days or if they've had surgery within the last four weeks. Do they have swelling of their calf greater than three centimeters? Are contralateral superficial veins present? Do they have swelling of the leg? Are there localized tendernesses along the venous system? 
Is there signs of pitting edema within the symptomatic leg? Do they have a history of a deep vein thrombosis? Or are there any other diagnoses on your differential that are likely or more likely than a DVT? Now we're going to take a look at some of the imaging studies often used in conjunction with D-dimer testing. First, we have an example of a CT pulmonary angiography that is positive for a pulmonary embolism. This slide shows an example of an ultrasound that is positive for a lower extremity deep vein thrombosis. This VQ scan is positive for a pulmonary embolism in the right upper lobe. An imaging study that is positive for either a DVT or PE combined with a positive D-dimer test is diagnostic. So here we have a slide to summarize what we've gone over in this lecture and give you the main key points. First off, D-dimer is recommended as an adjunct test. It should not be the only test used to diagnose a disease or condition. Both increased and normal D-dimer levels may require follow-up and can lead to further testing. CBC, CMP, PT, INR, and PTT, with or without cardiac enzymes, are usually ordered with the D-dimer test. These may give you some more information as to the cause of the symptoms. Thank you.